Well, hey everyone, welcome back to Kitchen Table TCG. A little bit of a bit different of a setup for you today. My camera is over here. It's gonna be an interesting video to see if I can do it without being all weird. Uh, but we're gonna be talking about Everfest First Edition. We'll do a little bit of a market update for you to see where the boxes are and where the EV is. If you want access to all this stuff as a collection tracker, and if you want to support the channel, you can head on over to patreon.com slash kitchen table TCG. I do have a collection tracker as part of the Patreon that updates in real time whenever I do a video like this. You also get a 5% off discount code over at minmaxgamesfab.com. Minmax Games is an amazing, amazing LGS that is doing some really cool stuff and is really trying uh, to be a big LGS and a big name in the flesh and blood community. And I'm glad to uh, be helping them out with that. So let's hop in to Everfest first edition and see what's going on with the boxes. I only have one monitor now, so this is gonna be a little bit difficult, but we'll see how it goes. So Everfest first edition boxes, we're really sitting at um, around uh, around 78 bucks. This has uh, been pretty stable here. Uh, let me pull it up for you. Around 78 bucks, pretty stable. And uh, in terms of volume, we're starting to pick up a little bit in volume for some reason this week. Uh, on the 9th, which is today, we've had 11 sold listings. We had none on the 8th, one box sold on the 7th. The volume of Everfest is, has been very, very interesting. It just doesn't seem very high and then all of a sudden it picks up it's a weird weird market uh but volume you know we had uh, 10 boxes sold yesterday other than that last week kind of a soft and slow market right now currently though plenty of listed um, a bunch listed under that 80 dollar price point and you know even like this one has 22 boxes so lots of boxes available it's definitely not something that you have to rush out and get your hands on immediately or rush to get it uh supply seems very very abundant right now uh, as we hop into the Fable, the Grandor of Valhalla is sitting at 260 bucks. There's only one copy available at this price. It's actually at 250 on um, TCG Player right now. And there's only a one available. So I used 260 just because there are sold listings up in the 270s. Although like the volume of this is very low too. This is the most interesting thing for Everfest and for Flesh and Blood right now. The volume sold of a lot of these higher end cards, a lot of the boxes is so low. It just makes you question the supply chain and all the things that are going on. Uh, you know, only one sold, uh, sorry, one, two, three four five sold this month so far and we're uh, you know nine days into the month kind of interesting to see but there is one at 250 and uh, so I used 260 on this to show you uh, the price point at 260 uh, there's only one available at 250 so I don't know. all right as we go on and move into the legendaries legendaries this week are up seven percent we had a dip last week down 15 percent another retracement back up uh, skull cap at a hundred dollars now here's why I think skull caps at a hundred dollars if you ask me uh, there may have been some people who thought that skull cape was skull cap was going to be in the history pack volume one set uh, and it is not in that set so I think that's what caused a little bit of a, a buyback uh, in addition, you may have th thought people, you may have had people who thought it was going to be in that on the announcement. So it's interesting. It's kind of leveled off here at the hundred dollar price point, which is probably probably a pretty good price for it here. Uh, and again, volume we had two sold listings there, and there are currently nineteen available, a decent chunk under that kind of hundred and ten dollar price point. All right, let's move on. Uh, Silver Palm sitting at forty three. Stal Stalagmite, uh, the Bastion of Eisenloft, also up this week to eighty five. Uh, let me show you that one. That one was a little interesting too. Um, so it, it is at uh, 85, 86. This one it, uh, did get purchased a little bit this week, but it's still dripping down. We do have not that many available under the $90 price point. So it's some, definitely something to be interested in if you need that card for play. As far as first edition and unlimited goes, it it's still unclear. They still had it on the website as of a couple of days ago. They saw it on the website for Unlimited in September, but in that interview with, or in the Rudy video, he said that it was would not come out if the market doesn't need it. I don't know what that looks like. I don't know if that if that looks like with uh, boxes that map. We're not we're not in September yet, so it doesn't really matter this far. But at some point, they have to hit print on that. It'll be interesting to see if they actually do that. So, Bravo Star of the Show sitting at seventy five dollars. I I don't know where the bottom is for this card. It seems like week to week it just continues to lose money. It wasn't too long ago that this was a $200 card 
uh, back about a month and a half ago. This is a $200 card two months ago. Uh, so I don't know where the bottom of this is. Remember that this card is not short printed. There have been people who have opened a thousand boxes and only gotten one or two less of these than the rest of the Majestic. So I don't think that this card short printed. It'll be interesting to see where it bounces out. It is by far the most beautiful card and definitely a chase card in the set. But with Bravo on the brink of living legend status and the brink of bans and restricted announcements, uh, I'm just not sure where the, the top or bottom is for this card. That being said, you did have some movements. Vex and Coal Hand is going up. Helm of the Sharp Eye is going up. And Skull Crushers is going up. Skull Crushers is at 15 still. Helm of the Sharp Eye at 15 still. And Vex and Quill Hand uh, continuing to kind of bounce up and down. This has been a popular card. Definitely a card that is one of the more important legendaries of the set, if you ask me. Kraken's Aethervine Aether Aethervine, Aethervine has leveled out. Obviously, we had a buyout happen of this when Islander was in Everfest. I uh, got bought out all the way to $41 when we started talking about wizards and all that stuff. It dropped down to 31 but now has retraced back to 33 this week. Other than that, no huge price swings. I will say Potion of Deja Vu is being incredibly popular this week, up 46% from $12 to $18. Uh, only the real, really the only potion that holds any considerable value is that Potion of Deja Vu. Potion of Luck at $8 is a little bit of value. The rest of them are all $5 or less. That puts your average cold foil up 4% to $13.77. Your average rare is at $5.46, which is up 6%, and your average majestic is up 3% to $31.33. Looking at your extended arts, on average, up to $15.52, which is up 4%. Keep in mind that we weigh this out as one in every two boxes, and we just use the average of this because it's too hard to know what the pull rate is for individual cards. Uh, so we did have some upticks, some downticks. A lot of these um, cards are getting pretty cheap. He did have Slice and Dice is moving up this week, up 71% and 356% and 10% for your colors there. Runeblood Incantation is up 105%. Winds of Eternity Low is down. Starting to see some of these majestic ones drift a little bit away from the uh, price points or start to stagnate at least. Uh, Aether Wildfire at 92, Pull Rise at 80 super interesting to watch this market uh pick a card any card only a dollar it's interesting to see how spiky it is you know uh, we use the pull rate of one and two but your odds of getting a card that are 15 dollars is very very low you're either going to get a very expensive card or you're going to get a very cheap card which makes the ev of this wild um because there's really only three or four cards that you want to hit in this ea slot to have any significant change to your box but uh it's kind of wild it's very interesting average price at 15 dollars, which is up four percent Looking at your Majestic Rainbow Foils, uh, we are up 3% to a price of $4.78. This is for the Rainbow Foils. Uh, Fire Breathing continues to move up as it is a, a card that is being used in Islander, I believe, is what people told me. I have not played that deck yet, um, but Fire Breathing moving up, definitely seeing a lot of play, definitely seeing a lot of interest as the format kind of shifts, especially with these new heroes coming out. Miraging Metamorph up 15% to $15.00. Other than that, uh, you know, Battering Bolt is being picked up a little bit. Break Tide, definitely an interesting one. Uh, maybe some people specking on the new Ninja stuff. Maybe some people playing Ninja uh, for the Pro Tour. Definitely a lot of things to talk about. A lot of interesting takes at $3.50. Uh, all in all, though, just lots of ups and downs. Ready to roll down 26%. Rolling Thunder down 15%. Spring Tidings is down 11%. So that Break Tide is definitely an interesting one to keep your eyes out. Although this is Rainbow Foil version. Let's hop into the regular Majestics, the non-foils. So these regular Majestic non-foils, on average, your price point here is sitting up 4% to $2.21. Not a ton of value. Uh, cash Out is up. You've got Miraging Metamorph, again, up to $7.49. I think that Prism is going to be seen a lot at the Pro Tour, and that may be part of the reason some of these cards have dried up is people who are picking those up. We also have the new ProQuest season that is starting, so there's definitely a lot of deck building happening, and I think Prism is definitely a deck that is going to, to need to be dealt with, and a lot of people are going to be moving towards, so uh microprocessor signal jammer also all up dissolution sphere also up a little bit now not not a considerable price tag here on these cards but being up 50 percent being up 14 percent does suggest that more and more people are buying those cards so we'll see what happens in the long run if that continues winds of eternity up 20 percent to six dollars 
Oh no, not a whole lot to talk about. Um, not a, these changes are pretty minute because the value of the cards is pretty low. Even like Pulverize, one of your more expensive cards, only at four dollars and fifty cents. When it's of eternity at six dollars. Uh, Swarm and Glue at 15 and Revel and Rune Blood at 15 are pretty even and uh, pretty flat. But it's interesting to see up 4% to $2.21. Let's skim through your rares real quick. Your rare rainbow foils are down 1%. Uh, your regular rares, not really any value. Average price of $0.06 cents up 4%. Common rainbow foils, again, not much value here, but if you care about it, it's important to note. Up 5% to $0.12. Cents. And uh, as we get to the EV calculation here, uh, this is how we calculate this all out. Obviously, we do that extended art one in every two boxes, like I said. Um, and that kind of lands us at a EV. If you're going to open up all the boxes, you're going to sell those rares, sell those commons. You're at $83.14. If you only want to include the Majestics through the Fables, you're at $79.53. So this is like if you open up a whole 40 box spread. If you don't want to sell the fables and don't think you'll be able to make money off the rares or the commons, you're sitting at $73.33. This would be if you're opening up 10 boxes, your average price would be about $73. If you're just going to open up one box and you do end up getting a cold foil rare, and this number does include the extended art as well, one every two boxes, so half the value. If you are, the, the EV on average would be about $37.76. So you really do have to hit like a majestic cold foil in order order to break even on these boxes and even if you open up 40 boxes it's just the the 77 dollars price tag makes sense if you like opening boxes this is certainly one of the products to go for i would say this or um or crucible of war unlimited probably the products to go to but uh this is a good one so anyway if you want access to all this stuff as a collection tracker if you want to hang out in the discord server if you like playing webcam games if you like um being able to communicate with people who have the same interests as you and if you want to support the channel you can do that over at patreon.com slash kitchen table tcg you also get a five percent off discount code over to min max games fab and you get access to the collection tracker which is just a way to track your collection in real time whenever we do a video like this hope you have yourself a fantastic day remember to be kind to the people around you and we'll see you again next video